सहनावतु सहनो भुनक्तु सह वीर खरवाय तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिषावे ओ शांति 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 श्रुति स्मृति पुराणा आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंकर शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्र भाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः समस्त जनकल्याणे निरत करुणामय नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विवर ओ चिन्मय सद्गुवे नम हरि ओम वी आर् स्टिंग दि प्राणाधिकरण ऑफ द फर्स्ट अध्याय ऑफ ब्रह्मसूत्र भाष्य बाय शंकराचार्य द एंटायर एक्सरसाइज ऑफ ब्रह्मसूत्र इज टू रिकनसाइल द utterances of the rishis in the vedanta portion or the upanishad portion of the veda reconcile them through samanvaya and come to a concrete paroksha gnana or theoretical conclusion of what the ultimate reality is there are very few and rare ones who in their life undertake an exercise of this kind the myriad presentation of the diversities of life around us makes us so absorbed in the varieties of this maya knowing fully well that it is illusory we get so deeply entrenched into the snares of the traps of maya that very very rarely only with the grace of yester births good deeds prarabdha a few rare amongst us think or study what is the ultimate reality of life what is the purpose of life and what is my nature a serious journey deep within to explore the nature of ours propels us into a whirlwind of thinking and thoughts with diversity of thought processes at times we get completely lost in the jungles of enormous amount of thought processes and we need a correct light or the guidance 
as to where the thought process should lead us to. Brahma Sutra and Acharya's Bhashya is an attempt by the stalwarts, by those who have realized the Brahma, by sheer dint of their courage, the courage that one requires to achieve the Brahma Stiti is the most stupendous as far as the dimension is concerned and very, very few and very, very rare. Anushanam Sastreshu Kaschit Yachati Siddhai Arjuna, very, very few amongst the lot even struggle to come to me. So thanking our yesterbirth's punyai, we would like to further take the discussion of Brahma Sutra. Thanking to the Lord and His blessings that we still have in our mind, curiosity about Brahma Swarupa. We are trying to explore Badarayana Rushi's extremely compacted terse sayings, aphorisms, sutras, which by itself cannot be comprehended unless commented by the intellectual capacity of equal or more caliber which Shankara possessed and that is why under the light of Shankaracharya's guidance we are trying to understand what precisely Audulomi, what precisely Vasacharya, what precisely the Badra and Arushi had in their mind when they were talking about the nature of Brahma and that brings us to the Adhikarana called Prana Adhikarana. The Upanishadas are replete with references to Prana. You go anywhere in the world, any philosophy in the world, you will not find mention of Prana. That is because the creation or the cosmos has never been explored the way the darshanas or the Hindu philosophy has explored it. Long, long, long before the atomic physicists came out with these minutest undivided particles moving from an obvious atom and going down to the subatomic particles and coming out with an absolutely astonishing discovery that the subatomic particles are not particles because they have very, 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 very small mass, which is counted in angstrom units. But all they have is an energy. There came a concept of energy shells. We all know S, P, D, F, different kinds of energy shells in which the electron moves. And further settler to that are hundreds of subatomic particles who in their couple, as a couplet, they are moving inside the atom at an enormous speed the speed that cannot be measured so easily to an extent that the position of such an subatomic particle cannot be pointed out with certainty. All the science tells us that all that we can talk about the positioning of these subatomic particles is only by indicating a probability of its presence. The Schrodinger's principles, the principles of uncertainty, all these indicate towards the nature of every object in this world through the eyes of physicists, 
who comes to a final conclusion that there is nothing in this world except the energy. The so-called light ray it's said to be consisting of the particle called photon, which again in itself is nothing else but the vibrating energy. So it is everything that is set into vibration, depending upon the number of vibrations within a particular distance, which is indicated by means of the wavelength. And depending upon the crest and the trough of the waves, the physicality of a particular particle is then deciphered with the help of vibration. The intense and the dense vibration endows density to a particular thing. If the vibrations are wide apart, we indicate that the state of a substance is in gaseous state. In other words, what the Indriyas perceive as an object is nothing else, but it is a compacted energy which may present to us as mass. The same mass then again can be back into the energy form in which perhaps our senses will fail us to diagnose it. There are things around us in the energy form which we are not able to decipher at all. There are tanmatras around which you and me cannot see. So if one decides to plot a graph, a three-dimensional graph of things around us, including the observer, all that would see, whether we would see on that graph would be nothing else but the vibrating particles. So the whole world is nothing else but the vibrating energy or what is beautifully described by the Sanskrit word called spandanam. What it took so many of years for the physicists to explore and which they are still exploring, whether it is thermodynamics or quantum physics, it is entirely dedicated to the study of these vibrations or the energy patterns and energies and trying to find out the interlinkages between the energies at different places. How the distance between the energies influence upon each other is perhaps the current frontier of quantum physics. And the same principal truth was told by the Rushis, not by investigation of the modern physicist way, but through the mind, through the intense concentration, at the height of concentration, having enabled itself with the consciousness, he was able to decipher the energy that was around and he could see around the spandana. And one such Rushi, maybe the one whose name is never known to us, comes in Keno Upanishadha and says, Tad ejati, tad na ejati. It vibrates, it doesn't vibrate. It vibrates, it's in energy form. It doesn't vibrate, it is in mass form. Tad ejati, tad na ejati, tad dure, tad antike. It is far off. It is close by. The same energy, the same vibration, which vibrates here in me, does vibrate there in the entire cosmos. In fact, the cosmos is nothing else but the vibration, vibration, vibration. Spandanatmakaha Vishwaha. If the whole cosmos is made up of the spandanas, then as Swami Vivekananda so his great intuition achieved entirely because of his samadhi very openly declared that when the world goes into laya, when the universe is not existing, where do you think it is? It is back there into the seed form 
and the form of the world in the seed form is in the form of vibration it starts with the vibration it expands through the vibration it resolves in vibration and it stays in supta avastha in vibration alone the great point where the vibration starts expands and again resolves that great point is called bindu in entire nath panth or shakta panth or shaiva panth study parama bindu a bindu is the concentrated small single pointed thing where all the vibrations of the world have ultimately resolved and from there they are going to emanate again and the cosmos is going to get formed and the process never stops when it comes out it is expanding and expanding and expanding and expanding the same thing is now substantiated by the astrophysics saying that galaxies are still expanding and shall expand till a point reached where the resolution would start and that dissolution the laya would bring it back bring it back bring it back to the same great point called bindu and anything that what vibrates must create a noise incidentally the vibration that creates a noise is not a noise because of impact of a thing on another thing but it is a vibration that is giving a noise by virtue of vibration itself so it is anahata nad anahata unstruck sound essentially coming because the vibration started so we have the vibration the spandana spandana giving to nad that spandana giving the nad is the nad brahma that nad brahma is there in the entire universe all the things that are the parts of the universe so the essence of everything is nothing else but the nad brahma and this vibration is possible because of an energy which is the root cause of vibration so the shakti the energy that enables this vibration throughout the cosmos present in each and everything because each and everything is vibrating each and everything which is in spandanatmakata is because of the shakti which makes it vibrate that shakti alone is called pran so it is the pran that is making it possible the vibrations of the entire cosmos in other words the presence of cosmos itself is because of the initiating energy ever existing energy which makes itself visualizable through the vibration and same thing same energy called prana does exist in our body in the form of a prana what does it do the prana is praniyate prane na praniyate prana makes things move makes things vibrate that which sheer because of its presence allows everything to go into spandana and move forward is called a pranava prakarshena nayate iti pranavaha that is why the omkar so when the prana comes everything is possible all that we see around us is nothing else but the transformation of the same prana depending upon its vibration the ghana sthiti the drava sthiti the vayu sthiti 
and even the fourth state called matrix. These are all possibilities because of the vibrations of the particle constituents of that particular object. A smaller an object like a stone pebble, the vibrations are intensely dense and they're restricted to that particular pebble of the stone. But for a thing called Vayu, the vibrations are throughout the cosmos, all over. And when such vibration, such prana is existing in my body also, then looking at the magnanimity, the dimension, the huge aspect of this prana, at times the rushis, when they realize at the higher state of consciousness, the way you and me can see an object like a mountain and say, what a beautiful mountain it is. At the height of contemplation with the indriyas completely shut off, the rushi is able to visualize the entire cosmos wobbling, vibrating with the Nada Brahma all over, which also includes his body. That perception is then realized as nothing else but possible because of the ultimate reality called Brahma. So it is the Nirguna Brahma which by its aspect of Saguna Brahma starts exhibiting the Shakti in the form of Prana and the entire linkage from the smallest possible subatomic particle to the largest gigantic Vibhuti is seen as nothing else but everything breathing in vibration by the Rushi at the higher level of consciousness. And then he utters a word that that prana is the Brahma. Because he says the prana is Brahma, an ordinary mortal like you and me start immediately suspending, suspecting that prana is nothing else but the breathing vayu that I am taking because prana, apana, vyana, samana, udana, these are the pancha pranas that I have inside my body. So when I breathe, it is possible because of this pranas and these pranas are, we know it is a vikara of vayu. Vayu is a shrestha than prana. Because Vayu's modification is Prana. And here the Rushi is saying Prana is Brahma. What is true? Is Prana Brahma or not? So the reference made by this Rushi as Prana being the ultimate Adhar of everything is, is he referring to the Prana that we breathe or is he referring to Prana as Brahma? That is the Saushaya. Brahma Sutra starts with first part which is called Samushaya. There has to be a doubt. Then comes Purva Paksha, taking one side of the doubt and explaining it. And then comes Siddhanta Paksha, directly attacking the Purva Paksha and establishing the fact and removing the Samushaya. So Pranadhikaranam has got only one Sutra, Ata Eva Pranaha. And what is the Samasya? The samasya is vayu vikara pranaha va brahma. And this all started because in Chandogya Upanishad, we must remember one of the oldest antiquity Upanishada is Chandogya Upanishada. So high is the greatness of Chandogya Upanishada that Chandogya Upanishada has been used by Acharya Shankaracharya 810 times in Brahma Sutra. Amongst all the Dwadasha Mukhya Upanishada, it is the Chandogya Upanishada which has been given precedence because it is not only one of the elders, but it carries absolutely high esoteric philosophy which is so great in its depth 
that none can escape its study if one has to realize the Brahma. The great sentences, although not Mahavakya, although Avantara Vakya, but has same significance as Mahavakya, such as Sarvam Khalividam Brahmasi, comes from Chandogya Upanishad, which is a part of Sama Veda. So in Chandogya Upanishad, when the Prastot, the Rushi who recites the Prastava part of the Sama Veda Rucha, each Sama Veda Rucha is recited by four Rushis. Each Samaveda Rucha has five parts, starting with Omkara, then we have Prastava, Prastot, Prastava, then we have Udgitha. The last part is called, the third is called Pratihara and fourth is called Nidhan. Four parts make one Rucha. Of that, the first three Rushis were asked by one Brahmana, during the yajna, when the whole yajna was happening at the behest of a raja, he asked a question that what is the devata that you are propitiating? He prastota, he udgita, he pratihara, what is the deity of your mantra? Because simply chanting mantra the way we chant every day in our worship was not what the Aryans used to do. Each of the mantra was done with utmost concentration so that while chanting the mantra, the Ishta Devata of the mantra was actually coming and blessing the person who was uttering the mantra. So that's why they were called Mantra Drashta. They were able to see and visualize and experience the deity involved in that particular mantra. So that is why in Udgita Prakarana of Chandogya Upanishada, the Brahmana asks, O Prastota, Prastotaha, Ya Devata Prastava Manva Yatta, who is the God associated with this Prastava that you are now chanting? Let me know. If you are not able to tell, the heads will roll, meaning thereby you are as good as non existing because all your utterances are just like croaking of frogs, as told in Upanishad. And then, it says, Katamasa Devata Iti, which is that Devata? And then the answer was given, Prana Iti Hovacha, Sarvani Havab, Imani Bhutani, Pranam Eva Abhisam Vishanti, Pranam Abhyujjiyate, Saisha Devata Prastava Manvayatta Iti. The answer has been given, which is that Devata? Because it is prana. Why prana? Because all the bhutas dissolve in prana. All bhutas are created in prana. The devata connected with the prastava is prana only. So now the answer has been given. That the devata that is taken for chanting by prastava or prastota rushi, the one who chants the prastava part, the first part of Samaveda Rucha, is prana. But while answering, he said that, what is prana? Havas imani bhutani pranam eva abhisamvishate sarvani hava. All the things are created in prana and dissolve in prana. So now the question comes, if everything is created in prana and dissolves in prana, then is prana brahma or not? As referred by Rushi here, the Purva Paksha is not ready to listen to this prana as Brahma. They say that when openly they are talking about prana, we know prana is nothing else but vikar of vayu. What is prana? Prana is spandanam. Spandanam is possible. What is spandanam? Spandanam means from one point to another point, some movement happens. When we say anything vibrates, vibration itself presupposes a movement. And movement means from one point to another point. And one point to another point is called vahanti, to flow. And anything that flows, the tattva is vayu. 
amongst the pancha mahabhutas vayu is the tattva which takes a thing from a point to a b point if this is what the vayu tattva does then prana is nothing else but the vikara of vayu modification of vayu is prana vayu is everywhere it's freely flowing when the same vayu takes a particular function in my body it then becomes a life giver to me and it is called prana that is the reason when we do shwas uchhavas in both the cases you are taking in vayu and giving out vayu but the same vayu gets converted into pancha prana and sustains the body so who is the father of the prana the father of the prana is vayu so that means if it is vayu is the father prana is the child then prana is the vikar vikruta swarupa of vayu vikara means modification so specially modified vayu is prana and it is very clear so why talk of prana as a brahma prana is nothing else but the prana which is modification of vikara which exists in every body in the form of prana apana udana vyana and samana and pancha upa prana this is what puro paksha says it says vayu vikarasya pancha vrutte hai and all bhutas are created what about that it says every time we go into sushupti all our indriyas and mana and everything gets resolved into what prana and the same prana when we are awake brings back everything again the indriyas and everything come out remember maharaj this body is nothing else but a box these eyes these ears these have no meaning these are only instruments they are made to use by the inner power a dead man's eyes he has eyes but there is nothing there he can't see in fact the one who sees also is not there why the pranas are gone that means if the prana is not there indriyas cannot function and not indriyas nothing in the body can function <clears throat> if that is the case then other than the jagruta avastha the other two avastha which are called as swapna avastha and sushupti avastha in the swapna avastha the same pranas are taken back from the indriyas entire body and they enter into a special nadi called hita nadi hita nadi is a special tubule it's a tube nadi that carries the prana in it so prana enters the hita nadi which is normally situated in and around the heart not the medical heart the heart rud as described by the yogis and then it lets only the mind function not the indriyas so in swapna avastha only the mind is functioning none else part of the body is functioning no physical part no indriyas nothing is working only the mind is working and since the mind is working all the impressions on the mind whichever of those are who are intense are the one who are played by extrapolating the same emotions a woman is intensely attached to her husband and her baby in the dreams the same attachments are played on the screen of mind where she experiences again the same attachment in the extrapolated forms in some distorted forms or in the same forms the anxiety about the sick baby who is not well the mother is anxious and then she is sleeping she dreams in the dream of the child because of the anxiety because that's the latent and most potent impression she is carrying which is there when the pranas are entering into hita nadi 
Similarly, when we are deep asleep in Sushupti, that is the time the pranas enter into a nadi called Puritat Nadi. And in Puritat Nadi, not only the Indriyas, but even the mind also undergoes Laya. When mind undergoes Laya, Indriyas has got no significance at all. So when Indriyas are not there, mind is not there, body is not there, universe is not there, objects are not there, subject is not there, what is there? Nothing is there. At that point of time, when we call as a deep sleep or a Dhruda Nidra, at that point of time, still the body is warm and ticking. And when we are awake, suddenly from that Puritat Nadi, everything is projected out, which includes mind. And then it's like a sleeping giant suddenly waking up and starting the activities again. Who makes this possible? The prana. Everything goes into the laya in prana. The mind also resolves in prana. And it is the prana that brings forth everything again when we are awake. And that is why all bhutas are created in prana and all of them are dissolved in prana because it is said in Shatapata Brahmana, Yadavaya Purushaha Swapiti Pranam Tari Vag Appeti Pranam Chakshuhu Pranam Strutraha Pranam Manaha Sayada Prabhudyate Pranat Evadi Punar Jayante. When a man is in deep sleep, then vani, chakshu, karna, mana become dissolved in prana. And when he wakes up, all there are reborn in the prana. So the Puro Paksha says, it is very clear, the reference of prana is only to the vayu vikara prana. That prana need not be considered as Brahma. Puro Paksha is Sampurnam. Now Siddhanta Paksha is coming. Acharya is coming to defend that the prana referred is nothing else but Brahma only. How is he refuting? He says, look, prana referred in this mantra of Chanda Gupanishada refers to Parabrahma only because what is the mantra? Sarvani hava imani bhutani pranam eva abhisamvishanti prana abhyujjihate. Sarvani is the word. Sarvani means all bhut, when all bhut are referred, then it is not referring to prana because prana, if it is referred to, then it is for one bhut, one jiva. For me, when I go in sushupti, yes, everything is dissolved in prana, then it is referring to vayu vikara prana. But sarvani bhutani, all these bhutas, they cannot dissolve alone in prana because why? They have to dissolve and originate into something which is the original precursor. Adhishthata, the adhyakshata of which is ultimate, that is Brahma. So, this particular rucha is referring to Brahma only. Second, prana is the vikara of pancha mahabhuta. Pancha mahabhuta itself is vikara of prakruti. So how somebody who is Vikruti of Vikruti of Vikruti can be called as Sarvani Hava Imani Bhutani? That means here they are not referring to the prana of the Shwasa Uchavasa. They are calling prana here as Brahma only. So Sarva Bhutot Padaka Brahma only is mentioned here. And it is not only mentioned in Chandogya, the third Argument given by the Siddhanta Paksha is, look at the Keno Upanishada. What does it say? Srotrasya Sotram Manaso Manoyad Vachoha Vacham Saupranasya Pranaha Chakshusya Chakshuhu Atimuchya Dheeraha Pretasma Lokat Amruta Bhavanti In the same Keno Upanishada it is said, yet Pranena na praniti, yena pranaha praniyate. That which makes pranas work. That means it is clear that prana here is referred to as Brahma. 
how the prana can be brahma when we know prana is nothing else but the pranamaya sharir the second layer of the sharira it is even inferior to manomaya kosha it is inferior to vijnanamaya kosha how prana can be brahma the reason why prana is referred here as brahma is for saguna upasana we cannot forget that to know brahma to scale mount everest you cannot jump from the ground directly to the tip of mount everest you have to walk and every time you have to realize that oh i am closer to mount everest oh mount everest is like this much difficulty then further this much difficulty each base camp there are camps base camp camp 1 camp 2 camp 3 camp 4 and then mount everest similarly the one who has done base camp meaning antakarana chitta shuddhi then start scaling the heights of knowing the brahma when he starts scaling the heights of knowing the brahma then he has to essentially do upasana that means full concentration meditation on aspects of saguna brahma at the end in this cosmos or universe there are larger vibhutis and smaller vibhutis at a level of a smallest vibhuti like human beings or purusha as a human beings we understand some small things we understand mathematics we understand science <clears throat> we do accounting we do vyapar transaction we use brain we understand because we have ability to understand now this understanding is possible because of consciousness only the only problem is this is a very 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 limited microscopic application of consciousness my chakshu my eyes are like sun only but they are able to show me whatever my eyes can see yes they are so small but they can see a huge mountain how that huge mountain gets compressed in such a small eye because chakshu is not the criteria through the chakshu it is the consciousness applying through antakarana which is able to decipher such a huge and tall mountain so what is the limit of my chakshu shakti my chakshu shakti is limited to visualizing a mountain which is within the scope of my visual field which itself means that my field of vision is restricted by my ability of my eye now suppose there is another i which is powerful than mine the field of visual field will be much larger and wider he will come to know more things than me what it would mean is his knowledge would be larger and wider in in breadth than me so when it comes to surya surya being a planet of a very high luminosity it is able to put the light on the entire earth and also the other stars and planets in its own capacity of the visual field so that means vibhanti to know to have bhasha tatsya bhasha vibhanti to know to be aware of the awareness of mind is much smaller compared to the awareness of the sun the awareness of gurudeva is far wider than me why because gurudeva worked on extending the abilities of the consciousness in fact he went to the extent of he himself becoming the consciousness which is the farthest limit of any field that one can think of so if one has to think on realize the brahma he has to undertake steps of concentrating and meditating upon things which has a larger field of consciousness which is called vibhuti so if 
one is able to concentrate on surya he shall become surya naturally his field of visualization becomes much wider application of consciousness is much wider in the similar manner if we are able to concentrate upon the pranas with the help of shwas and uchhavas what happens the concentration leads to the knowledge of how the pranas in my own bodies are operating the prana that comes in with the shwas and uchhavas which becomes inside my body into five separate different aspects of prana called pran apan saman udan and vyan once i know these pancha pranas by internal assimilation anubhuti inside then i shall start working on the prana itself and then i come to know that the pranas are flowing through ida and pingala the left sided ida and the right sided pingala the left sided soma the chandra and the right sided pingala the surya we both are working through the autonomous nervous system and trying to keep the body in balance once i come to know that suddenly i visualize a chakra called muladhara chakra i am able to see that there is an energy lying there in the coiled form i am able to use my pranas and pull them back from the idala ida and the pingala make that prana utilize to shake vigorously and wake up the kundalini the three and half turned seat of power which is physically not tangible but only visualized by the yogis and then that prana at the muladhara chakra after that kundali is awakened with the help of prana because prana's function is to propel forward i am able to propel that kundalini shakti inside a nadi called sushumna which was closed so far which is adhomukhi and closed in that the serpini starts entering and starts moving upwards and keeps moving upwards through the different shad chakras at each chakra whether it is स्वादिष्ठान मणिपुर अनाहत विशुद्ध और आज्ञा चक्र ईच चक्र भेदन द सेम प्राणा दैट वाज सो फॉर सस्टेनिंग माय बॉडी नाउ हेल्प्स मी इन रियलाइजिंग द प्राणाज इन द एंटायर कॉस्मॉस इन अदर वर्ड्स एट ईच लेवल ऑफ द ऊर्धोगति ऑफ प्राणाज एंड ऊर्धोगति ऑफ कुंडलिनी माय नॉलेज अबाउट दिस कॉस्मॉस कीप्स ऑन इंक्रीजिंग मेनी फोल्ड्स the consciousness starts widening now i am having antar chakshu what the bahya chakshu can do is a limited thing while my antar chakshu is now able to give me the knowledge of the entire cosmos even though i have closed my eyes and i am sitting in some far off jungle in solitude with utmost concentration this being a state to basically understand the vastness of brahma so vastness of a ocean can always be understood by seeing a vast lake first once the lake's vastness is understood then the state for understanding the vastness of ocean can be taken similarly when the pranas are meditated upon as brahma the entire aspect of the prana and spandana of the entire cosmos is understood once that is done then it becomes easier to take a step beyond so in order to make this saguna upasana possible pranas have been taken as the aspect for meditation for saguna upasana so that saguna brahma's one aspect is realized helping the person then to fly further upwards so pran upasana pran upasana is nothing else but saguna brahma upasana here it should not be taken as only a common ordinary pran which is existing in a body the common functionality of the pran is to supply the energy to our body and keep us alive and warm but that is a far restricted aspect of the prana when we see any other human being we feel that oh he is another manushya he is my friend 
that is the lowest way of interpreting any other jiva by you and me but a god realized saint whenever he sees anybody he says ah this is another consciousness in a pluripotent form this is another diversity of consciousness that three is another diversity aishwaryam of ishwara that mountain is aishwaryam of ishwara they know the kernel they know the core they know the consciousness we know the outer aspect or the matter vesture or the jackets that is the difference sarvatram ekatvam anupashyati isha vasya upanishad yastu sarvani bhutani the one who sees all the bhutas as one that one is possible only when the ability of consciousness to comprehend the oneness by comprehending the largeness so the step to understand the comprehend comprehension of oneness is to first comprehend the largeness and this comprehension of vastness or the largeness is called vibhuti there is entire adhyaya that is in bhagavad gita called vibhuti yoga bhagwan is again and again saying arjuna take the vastness of samaveda one part of samaveda in the upanishad is chandogya upanishad bruvadaranaka upanishad is also part of samaveda when we take one rucha of samaveda which we have taken just now for the prana it gives so much of vastness of knowledge that means there is vastness there is hugeness there is largeness in these kind of ruchas that is why bhagwan says arjuna in the veda i am the samaveda because there is vastness there in the parvat i am the himalayas because there is vastness largeness there so all saguna brahma is in the form of vibhutis and i being the smaller vibhuti my attempt first is to understand the larger vibhutis when as a child we start growing in a kingdom we first see the gardens we first see the roads we first see the chariots we see uh, fountains and we say wow how beautiful and then we come to know who created it the raja the king created it similarly we study the vibhutis we contemplate upon them that naturally leads to the further question who is the originator of this vibhutis i am able to comprehend it the one who doesn't know the vibhutis will never know the raja the one who doesn't know the saguna brahma will never understand the nirguna brahma nirguna che bheti alo saguna sange the saintly people say i have come to visit the nirguna brahma by holding the hand of saguna brahma thara rang mahal mein ajab shahar mein ajare hansa bhai nirguna raja ne sirguna sej sajai raja nirgun hai sej saguna hai you sleep on the bed which is saguna you will get the nirguna that is why saguna brahmo brahma upasana is the subject of all upanishads and it is the subject of brahma sutra the goal is to reach nirguna brahma the methodology is to hold on to saguna brahma and the process is to hold to the saguna brahma increase the ability of the hold the one who can hold properly is the one who is sadhana chatushtya so start going to the gymnasium and making the physics strong the spiritual physics is made strong with the help of sadhana chatushtya only that only those who are strong in spiritual physics can then come and grapple with saguna brahma the one who grapples with saguna brahma is then able to reach and catch hold of the nirguna brahma becoming brahma swarupa that is why prana adhikarana is clearly pointing out as established by shankaracharya 
that prana mentioned here in chandogya upanishad and at other places is nothing else but indication of brahma only for god's sake do not take this prana as the lower prana that you know which is used in shwasya uchchavasa step by step inch by inch the purpose is to lay open remove the coverings of brahma so that the nirguna brahma is understood by us at intellectual level which is called paroksha jnana the purpose of brahma sutra chandogya upanishad is paroksha jnana do not forget that we are still trying to understand the recipe we have not cooked the vyanjana we have not made the dish at all the proof of pudding lies in eating right now we are trying to see what pudding is how it is made unless you know exactly how it is made you will never be able to make it so paroksha jnana has its own importance but it requires intellectual ability also unless the sattva guna is there in one he cannot understand the nitty gritties of ved or upanishad unless he has intellectual blessings from the lord essentially coming because of yester births prarabdha where we have done some punya karma then the saraswati mata and ganesh ji if they are prasannam with us then what is mentioned in the upanishads and what is talked about in brahma sutras becomes comprehensible unless you comprehend you cannot practice all the yama and niyama as stated by patanjali maharaj is constantly to keep us away in the form of chastity spiritual chastity is sattva guna paripoosh when spiritual chastity is there then all these aspects of what is discussed in brahma sutra leading us thought wise to that ultimate brahma swarupa is possible for all others it looks like it feels like a boredom there are many who would carry in their mind a doubt why get into such a complexity of brahma sutra and all that it's always better to say ram 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 it is an escapism had we been conscious and powerful enough to chant the rama with the right earnest required for it we wouldn't have come to brahma sutra there are people of bhakta pralada stature who alone by chanting the nama the valmiki rushi by chanting the rama nama reached the same brahma but we shall not forget that that chanting and that depth of chanting comes only because of the chitta shuddhi of the yester births come what may the basic qualification remains the same that is why instead of thinking in our mind as to why such kind of complexity we should be studying what what is its use it has enormous use had there not been the use of granthas like brahma sutra and upanishad it wouldn't have been prescribed as the scriptures by all the realized saints in his entire life gurudeva and swami vivekananda spoke of nothing but upanishad because what is bhagavad gita dogda upanishad it is the milk of the upanishad the upanishad and its interpretation is the only and the only door that one has to knock to see the brahma no other method no other manner no other religion no other thought process no other knowledge no other secular or non secular knowledge no other scripture no other book except knocking on the doors of upanishad that one can get brahma brahma realization and that is why the study so this concludes pranadhikarana 
then comes the question there is also a reference of jyoti prakash jyoti so that is why jyotish charana adhikaranam will be the next adhikarana that we will study because upanishad is replete with the analogy of jyoti aditya jyoti chakshur jyoti antar jyoti angushtha matra jyoti so here the jyoti means agni or jyoti means brahma that is the question that will be dealt with in jyotish adhikarana or jyotish charana adhikaranam hariyo om purnamada purnam idam purnat purnam udachyate purnasya purnamadaya पूर्णमेवशिष्यते ओ शांति 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 हरि ओ श्रीगुभ्यो नम हरि ओ संजय जी इट वॉज वेल कॉम very comprehensive and we have understood the significance of prana uh, my uh, i have two questions two or three questions are you sure this western philosophers none of them have commented upon prana so far in their in inventions and except the greek philosophers and greek philosophy or hellenistic philosophy as swami vivekananda has correctly said is nothing else but the thought of vedanta that went through alexandria to the greek civilization so it is basically again a distant echo of vedanta philosophy so in the philosophy of socrates plato and aristotle and neoplatonist we do see mention of such kind of ether or energy or prana etc however subsequent to that except stray philosophers we do not see any mention of this kind of specificity of prana things like psychic energy things like a perpetuating energy etc have been referred to but the precise nature division of it into five mukhya pranas and five upapranas the way they operate the relationship of prana and the vibration its relation with the origination of the cosmos that depth that width there is not there in the western philosophy thank Hariyo. you uh, now second question is that we should not of course mistake this prana with the uh, other pranas like uh, or uh, oxygen and other things like that but still i have a doubt that in the, in the space this prana should be uh, dwelling in a subtle form uh, do you think so because uh, the uh, that is the system that is the way the system has to work according to vedanta so i seriously doubt that this prana should be present there but not in physical form maybe in some subtle form later may in, we may invent our scientists may invent this uh, do you think so again you are confusing between prana and prana as spandana in the form of vibration which is referred to commonly as spandana prana is existing is it ubiquitous it is existing everywhere forget about space everything including the whatever is inside the space is made up of prana the astronaut going there is prana the the satellite is prana the observation is prana everything is pranamaya the same prana gets modified in certain vibhu, certain upadhis like in our case part of that prana called oxygen is utilizable by us but an aerobic bacteria they do not take the same prana as we take as prana for our living so prana is a modification depending upon the jiva for the utilization purpose is different however prana should not be taken only as prana vayu 
that is the exact the discussion that we had pranavayu is referred to as far as manushya shariram is concerned that is correct in the form of apana etc with separate functioning whatever has been described from mukhya prana and upa prana but the prana that referred here is the vibratory aspect of existence everywhere and on that you are supposed to concentrate not on this prana this prana shall be the beginning so you start with shwasa uchchavasa and then leave this prana that is why you go into what is called as purna kumbhaka it's complete cessation of prana so you are not breathing any more it is very 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 shallow and ultimately almost suspended why because you have taken this prana to ride into the ultimate aspect of prana which is the vibratory aspect and it is then not restricted to jiva like sharira it is everywhere in this universe so you are vibrating with the entire cosmos nad anahat man jagere kabir maharaj says i am vibrating with anahat nad of this world is ghat andar इस घट अंदर बाग बगीचे इसी में पालन हारा इस घट अंदर नाद अनाहत सतत उठत उभारा तो वॉट इज रेफरिंग टू इज दैट कॉस्मिक वाइब्रेशन कॉल्ड नाद ब्रह्म विच इज मेड पॉसिबल बाय द प्रिमोर्डियल एनर्जी कॉल्ड प्राणा an applicable aspect of which is restricted to a particular jiva as prana vayu so these two are completely different things are you oh thank you so that is the reason we are saying prana syadam vashe sarvam that uh, upanishad uh, mantra absolutely absolutely pranasya eva again we know the vibhakti pranasya it is the okay. prana who is into this implement in, in different applications Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any more? Any more questions? Yeah. Ah, uh, just one thing, Sanjeev ji. Ah, uh, you. This was very well explained. The last part, actually, I was also suffering with that about the cosmic vibration and the application. But when we say that prana is what keeps ah uh, creation, when it's in the life form, also it is the vibratory movement. right so are we and then on the other hand you also mentioned that prana is a vikar of vayu yes so i'm just a little confusion that if the creation does not exist then i would presume vayu does not exist yes so then See, how does prana yeah. which is a vikar of vayu very, uh, very valid question vayu is pancha mahabhuta pancha mahabhut again is nothing else but the further manifestation of the original vibration so fact remains that the nad brahma is what which has given rise to all this which in sankhya we call prakruti bhava from prakruti all the tanmatras and then pancha mahabhutas are created so essentially whatever is created is in the form of vibration only because if between two points there is no vibration or there are no two points creation is impossible with one point bindu creation is not there from a bindu when it begets other things then two are formed two points when two points are formed space is formed when two points space is formed time concept comes in between and then whatever is there is in the form of vibration depending upon the frequency of vibration vastu are created objects are created and pancha mahabhuta is an object only so vayu is definitely pranatmaka but that pranatmak vayu again undergoes a certain modification and becomes our prana vayu what we take so it is nothing else but the same a prana but prana getting modified into pancha mahabhuta called vayu why you getting modified into this and when we say modification what are we talking about we are talking about change in vibratory status the amplitude the crest the trough the wavelength that changes everything changes so this is precisely what happens so every time a new thing is formed there is no new thing formed there is only a set of vibrations they change 
how do we how do we define a chemical reaction or a physical reaction it is nothing else but certain vibrations coming together a third thing is formed the vibration of sodium and vibration of chloride coming together to form common salt called sodium chloride sodium is in the gas form chloride is in the glass form and what is formed sodium chloride it is in ghana form in the salt white in color where from the color came it is because of the two vibration mixing with each other so essentially at the root of everything it is this pandana tad ejati tad na ejati keno prashada says sometimes it vibrates sometimes it doesn't if it doesn't it is a solid mass like a stone if it vibrates it is under transformation and it gets transformed so it is the prana which created all this vayu etc and then that vayu further got modified in the form of our own vikara and vikara means modification it is continuously vikara so this is called vikruta or vikar hari yeah. one more allied thing to this is we say brahman is inert or there is no vibe you know uh, one would presume that there is no vibration uh there so when we say that prana is a reference or is symbolic of that even the cosmic energy and the cosmic energy is perhaps a symbolic of or enabled by brahman but brahman it is not brahman right it is the, uh, the fact the 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 thing issue is like this everything if you think it exists then it is vibration but issue is when you are at the nirguna brahma state from that state the cosmos itself is not there where is the question of vibration once again hmm. when you are within the creation all what we are studying is true when we are not within the creation we are out of the creation we are out of space and time when space and time is not there when the creation is not there how can vibration be there mm -hmm. you you understand so yes. what is as long as you are away you are in the desert and you are watching there is a mirage there is a sensation of water but when the desert is not there where is the question of mirage Mm -hmm. that is why we cannot forget that we started the study of brahma sutra with adhyasa we can't forget that shankara acharya had spent eight long pages of narration only for adhyasa because this world is adhyasa then the study starts okay you cannot forget that you are in a magician's place and the magic is going on this is explanation of the magic done by the magician with the help of magic for the understanding of the magic when it is understood the magician is over the magic is over the show is over are you yeah. one last thing sir uh, you know when the like you were talking about the pants which refer to the bindu right so they are referring to you know movement of bindu they refer to a points uh, which are there so is that the physical as i mean it's a symbolic representation of the cosmic movement that they're referring to or is it something absolutely 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 the way to understand the cosmos is to imagine the cosmos into certain aspect because we are we are used to aspects can you imagine something which has no dimension it is utterly impossible because we are used to dimensions and that's because our buddhi is not developed so in order to get that which is not within the buddhi to come in our in our embrace we try to take them into our thing for example we will create a yantra and we will say let the sun be here what is prana pratisthapana of murti you try to infuse the prana in that murti because prana is not there in that particular dead thing you instill it so that it becomes a live murti this mm -hmm. is all done with thoughts and the mind with the help of concentration so similarly we can always take the external vibhutis or saguna brahma and then implant them in our body it is called nyasa what is nyasa nyasa is to deposit 
deposit the same cosmic tattva in us so tomorrow i can do my upasana as i am vishnu and imagine that you have become vishnu that is called ahangraha upasana of course you and me imagining nothing will happen because we don't have the preparedness for it tapon maharaj did this kind of upasana it is called ahangraha upasana because he was qualified to call himself vishnu and actually the vishnu tattva exhibited through him at that point of time and what is vishnu tattva he didn't go to destroy him all as he simply realized what the world is because bhagwan vishnu knows because he is the sustainer of so he became sus being a sustainer's devotee he got the same knowledge as sustainer so that is how nyasa mantra yantra tantrik upasana all this is based on this in fact every day puja that you are doing is nothing else but tantrik upasana are you हरि ओम जी थैंक यू नमस्कार डॉक्टर साहब जी यू वुड एक्सप्लेन दैट एवरीथिंग इज पार्टिकल एंड वाइब्रेशंस बिटवीन द पार्टिकल सो जस्ट वांटेड टू चेक तुकाराम महाराज अभंगवेद सेज अनुरणिया खोकडा तुका आकाश येवडा हैज इट गॉट एनी रेलेवेंस विद व्हाट यू एक्सप्लेन टुडे absolutely anurenia means he is talking about sub atomic atomic particles because they becomes they are visualized by the rushis so sant tukaram maharaj was actually seeing everything in the same pranic vibrations everything and he said such a small constituent has made such a big world vaisheshika tattva gyan is entirely based on this sub atomic particles but he said behind all this there is a huge tattva which is almost like an akasha so i have become that akasha so he is saying with confidence anu renuya thokada tuka akasha evada this man called tukaram is not tukaram he is brahma brahma as vast as large as huge as akasha anu renuya thokada all this what is creation is there is in the form of this sub atomic particles and vibration that is very very inferior to what i am हरिओम